All right, good morning, my friends. We are gonna get started. It is 10.02. Uh, what you're looking at right now, this is Royal. She is a Chilean rose hair, and can you guess how old she is? Does anybody have a guess? How old do you think Ro uh, Royal, the Chilean rose hair tarantula is? I'll give you a hint. She's not older than I am. <laughs> so this tarantula is a Chilean rose hair. Her name is Royal. She was donated to, donated to us by a school here in Iowa. And this is how I know how old she is. So the teacher who originally got her um, received her as a little baby, a little sling is what we call babies. And that happened, wait for it, wait for it. That happened about 27 years ago. So we believe that Royal is about 27 years old. Caleb, you are super close. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up here and I'm gonna turn around, set this up here so I'm not super shaky all over. There we go. Good morning, my bug friends. So my name is Jenny, and I run the insect zoo at Iowa State University, and I'm also an entomologist. So if you have watched our live videos before, you already know what an entomologist is. But for those of you who are just joining us today, I'm going to tell you what it is. So an entomologist is a scientist. We've got a glare here. Those cameras, whatever. An entomologist is a scientist who studies bugs. But as an entomologist, we don't only study bugs. We get to study the largest group of animals on earth called arthropods. Now arthropods are animals, just like you are an animal, I am an animal, cats, dogs, dolphins are all animals, but we are all mammals. And the thing that mammals share is a backbone. So your spine is your backbone. So we have bones inside of our body. Well, arthropods, they do not have bones inside their body. Their bones are on the outside. So we call it an exoskeleton. So arthropods are animals that have exoskeletons or skeletons on the outside of the body. It's very different than you and me or maybe most of the pets that we have at home. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what are arthropods? So what animals are arthropods? Those are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. So even some of the animals we like to eat, they are very closely related to arthropods and they're all pretty much made up of the same stuff. So when you eat things like shrimp or crab or lobster, it's just like eating crickets. And if you want some crickets, you can find some awesome crickets from my friend Shelby at Gemini Gemini Eat Crickets. So she I will post a link. I've got links already up on my face on the Insect Zoo's Facebook page. Um, for Shelby, and she's running a special right now for 25% off all orders. And those can be shipped right to your door. She has cricket flour, she has protein bars with crickets, and she has just roasted crickets with lots of awesome flavors. Okay, so back to what we're doing today. We're not eating bugs. I'm sorry. If you want to eat bugs, you should contact Shelby, and she will hook you up with some delicious crickets to eat.
So today, we are going to talk about terrestrial tarantulas. So these are tarantulas that live on the ground. They don't go up in the trees like the arboreal tarantulas that we talked about last week. So these tarantulas like to live on the ground. Most of them will live in burrows or little holes that are in the ground that they make their home in. They can build those burrows themselves or they will take up an abandoned burrow. So an animal used to live in that burrow and it moved out and now a tarantula can move back in there. So let me tell you, so the reason we had to split the tarantulas into two days is because we have like 75 tarantulas. And I wanted to make sure that I got to show you guys most of them. So uh, that's why we split it into two days about two different kinds or types of living uh, uh, where they live. So we divided them by, by where they live, either up above, arboreal, or down below, terrestrial. Okay, so I'm just going to start on one end and I'm going to work my way down and then I have more tarantulas um, back here on this other bench. So the room we're in right now is called the A room. It stands for arachnid and arid. Arid means dry. So these tarantulas come from primarily dry environments that live in this room. Now we do have a different room which we call Big Mama. And in Big Mama, it is very, it is humid. It is like mid humidity. And so some of the tarantulas live in Big Mama, but I brought them in here so that it was easy for us to see them all in one room. You might be asking how many rooms does the insect zoo have? Well, next week I am going to do a full walking tour of all of our rooms. So that'll probably be next Friday. Uh, we will do the walking tour of all of the rooms of the insect zoo. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna get this camera turned around here and you will see, I'll give you a little preview of what we're gonna look at. Oh, we had a low connection. Can you see me now? Can you hear me? See, this is those same room scorpions are in. And so we had this problem last week, but I have the door open right here. So um, this, this wall over here, these are the tarantulas. And then I've got some on this bench. And then I've got um, two on that cart that we will talk about. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Okay, we're gonna start up here. So all of our tarantulas have names. And these names are brought to you by the students at the Iowa State University Insect Zoo. So we're going to start here. This is Donna. She is a Brazilian salmon pink bird eating tarantula or bird eater. Let's see. We have a low connection again. Maybe it's just when I'm back there. Okay, let's see if I can do this. So this is Donna. She's a Brazilian salmon pink bird eater tarantula. And these are the third largest tarantulas in the world. So they are very big and they grow very, very fast. So since it's called a Brazilian salmon pink, where do you think they're from? They are primarily from Brazil. low connection again. I'm sorry guys if it keeps uh, breaking up for you there. I've got my door open. Try and help it. Okay. So I'm going to move down. We've got um, lots of um, these Brazilian bird eating tarantulas. Let's go look at Gwen. So this one is Gwen. We're gonna look at her. Who is this? We still have low connection. Okay, so this is Gwen. And let's talk a little bit about their scientific name. So this first word here is the genus. 
And the second word is the species. So the genus is like a big group of these type of animals. And then they break them down in that group into a species. So that's what these, that's what the, these two words mean. And you know, there are over a thousand species of tarantulas that we know about. And there could be more. That is a lot. So let's take a look here at Gwen. I'm going to move her little plant here. Of course, it's not a real plant. And her little house. So you notice that these tarantulas are not aggressive at all. So they're very docile. So these tarantulas grow very, very fast. I'll get in there very close for you. You see those hairs all over their body? If you watched our live on the arboreal tarantulas last Friday, you would know what those are called. Those hairs are called setae, and I call them super hairs because they are super awesome. They have lots of superpowers. They can smell, they can feel around, they hear. They also protect themselves with those hairs on their body. So if you notice, she does have eight legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight legs. They also have two body parts. So tarantulas are an arachnid, eight legs and two body parts. This big ball part back here, you can call this her abdomen. Whoop, there she goes. <laughs> she did not like my finger there. So you notice she's got longer hairs there. And then she's got short hairs. The black hairs are shorter and those kind of blonde reddish hairs are long. Now some of those hairs on her abdomen are called urticating hairs. These are hairs that she can brush off. And she uses her hind legs back here to brush those hairs off. Now those hairs are very fine, very small. And so they can get into your skin and they can make you itch if you're human. If you get them in your eyes, they make them itch. But what about if you are a predator and you're trying to eat this tarantula? What would those urticating hairs do to a predator? We still have low connection. There we go. We're going good sometimes. So if you're a predator trying to eat this tarantula, the first thing the tarantula is going to do is try to run away. But if you go after the tarantula, then she's going to flick those hairs off and still run away. And those hairs are going to get into that predator's eyes and make them water and they won't be able to see. And they could breathe them into their lungs and make them cough and their throat will be all itchy. And so it's going to help protect the tarantula. Now, of course, she does have another way of protecting herself. That is her fangs. All tarantulas have fangs and all tarantulas have venom. Venom is like a poison that is put into you or a prey with fangs or a stinger. So these guys are venomous and they have to be venomous. That is the way that they eat their food. So tarantulas only eat liquid. They cannot eat anything hard or solid. So their venom turns what they are eating into a liquid and then under their fangs is a cute little fuzzy mouth that's got setae all over it and they slurp up the liquid and that setae helps to keep out anything solid from going into their mouth. All right, let's look at a different friend. Oh, so um, Gwen, this tarantula here. Oh, I should put her all of her stuff back. Gwen is a female and I told you about um, Royal, who is about 27 years old. 
So tarantulas, some species or kinds of tarantulas can live for a very long time. They can live up to 30 years and maybe even 35 years, but only the females can live that long. So you can see we've got Gwen's name here and then this sign means female. So we also have a male bird eating tarantula and I'm gonna show you him next. His name is Goliath. But really, he is smaller than the females. Let me get his little hide out of here. Hello, Goliath. So Goliath is sexually mature. That means that he is ready to mate. Well, he's been ready to mate for a while. He looks pretty scrawny, doesn't he? Well, that's the way he looks. The males of this species are much smaller than the females, and they have very long legs that are kind of spindly, and his abdomen is very small. Now, you'll notice that he's got a bald spot on his abdomen. That is because he flicks his hairs. So he is sometimes an aggravated tarantula, and he flicks his hairs around. Now, I left my forceps down here on this end, so I'm just going to stroll over here real quick and grab them. And we'll bring them back over here. And I want to show you something that happened to him. So we mated him. Low connection again. Okay, so we mated him. Let's see if I can bring him over here a little bit. You see how spindly he is? Now, you see this right here that's sticking up where my forceps are? That is called a pedipalp, and he's supposed to have two, but he's missing one right here. And that's because when we mated him with, I believe it was Donna, she, we think that she took, so we think that the mate happened, but then he did not escape fast enough, and she attacked him and bit his pedipalp, and then that would have fallen off. Now, that means that it's going to be difficult or hard for Goliath, this guy, to mate again. That's because on these pedipalps, they have little hooks. Let's see if I can get him to turn around. Come here. Turn around, my friend. Just want you to turn this way. Ooh, look at that. He's like, nope, just leave me alone. So they have little hooks, and I might be able to show you on a different tarantula, depending on that tarantula's mood today. But, ooh, he did not like that. So they have hooks on their pedipalps that hold the female's fangs while they're pushing them up to mate. So since he only has one pedipalp, He's probably not going to be able to mate again, and so we have not tried to pair him with another female. All right, Goliath, you were a very good sport. We're going to put your little house back, and then we will put your lid back on, and we're going to go to a new tarantula. Hey, guess what? This is another bird-eating tarantula in here. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. We have five of the Goliath bird-eating tarantulas, the third largest tarantula in the world. Now, I want to show you another tarantula that is the largest tarantula in the world, and it's right over here. Okay, sorry, I accidentally pressed the wrong button to end the video. We don't want to end yet. We have so much more to show you. All right, and guess what? I left my forceps over here. Okay, you might be wondering what this thing is right here. Those are roach traps. To um, We have them all over in our rooms because we cannot use traditional um, bug traps for pests. So we have brown banded cockroaches all over our building. And so we trap them in those. So it's just got a little bit of food. And then there's Vaseline all around the top so that when the cockroach goes in, it can't get back out. So that's what you saw right there. Okay, friends, this right here is called a Goliath bird-eating tarantula. And these are the largest tarantulas in the world. And they are also found in South America, just like our Brazilian spider that we just looked at. So this one is not full-grown. 
And she has, she was actually born in captivity, which is awesome. So she was born, captivity means that she was not born in the wild. She was born um, somewhere uh, by somebody who breeds them. And so that's where she was born. So she never lived out in the wild. And you can see her very long legs and she is not full grown yet. So she's going to, when she is full grown, her legs, I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So when she is full grown, her leg span will be about 12 inches. That means that she's going to have a leg span about the size of a dinner plate. That is very, very big. So her name is Penny, and uh, that's nice because that's also my favorite cat's name. Now you may see, let's look at her eyes. Do you see these right here? Those are her eyes. Now she has eight eyes that are um, clustered together, so it kind of looks like she only has one big eye, but she actually has eight All right, now we're gonna put Penny's stuff back in here. Look at her, see she just wants to, she doesn't wanna bite me. She's running away, she's afraid of me because I am so much bigger than her. Now what would happen if a tarantula did bite? So last week we talked about the um, ornamental tarantulas, which are the most venomous tarantulas and how bad that bite would hurt. But if any of these tarantulas bit me, it would be less painful than a beast, excuse me, a bee sting. Okay, I've switched off my Wi-Fi and I'm using, um, what am I using? I'm using like my data to see if I can we stop losing connection. So this video, of course, will be posted after we're done. So um, if you are having, if this is causing too many problems and you're like, ah, there's bad connection, uh, please make sure you come back and watch the video later. Okay, so um, this tarantula right here is a Brazilian white knee tarantula. And these come from Brazil. I just saw a couple questions. So um, I'm glad that it's not disrupting for you guys. That's great. Um, and then I saw, can tarantulas smell fear? No, they cannot smell fear. Um, that is um, a myth. So a myth is something that is told, but it's not true. So tarantulas cannot smell fear. Um, so this tarantula right here, look at her awesome legs. You see those white stripes on those? Aren't those beautiful? There's several different types of or species of tarantulas that have a, a look like this. And they're pretty difficult to tell, tell the difference between the species of them. But then on her abdomen back here, look at those bright red hairs, those setae on there. Aren't those amazing? Pretty awesome. Okay, now I want to take you over here. Oh, sorry, lady. Okay, I'm going to take you over here and I want to show you a different type of tarantula that is not very nice. I'm going to need my forceps for this one. Okay, so this tarantula is called a king baboon. And look at all that web. These tarantulas web up so much. So this is a king baboon tarantula. Is that right? This one is? No, sorry. This is an orange baboon tarantula. We have a couple of 
the baboon tarantulas. So I wanna make sure I get the right name. And look how brightly colored he is. Isn't he beautiful? Actually, this is a female. So she, although her name is Oscar, but that's okay. So we're gonna, I wanna show you, look at that. So this is, this tarantula right here is called an old world tarantula. Look at that. Do you hear that? They make a hissing sound. Try to get him to do it again. Can you hear that? You hear that? He's rubbing his, or she's rubbing her fangs together to make that sound. Now this tarantula, these species of baboon tarantulas are old world tarantulas. He's very mad now. Make sure I don't let him out. Maybe I'll open this here instead. Okay, so these old world tarantulas, they do not have those urticating hairs that they can brush off to defend themselves. So they are more venomous. So the bite from this tarantula causes some pretty intense pain in the area of the bite. So if it bit my hand, my hand would hurt really bad, M way worse than a bee sting. And it would swell up and I'd probably have some muscle pain inside of there, maybe some joint stiffness, which means that I wouldn't be able to really bend my fingers very much. And that could last for a couple days. Now that's definitely not as bad as our ornamental tarantula. I want to show you one more time. So he does this even whenever we are just feeding him. Nope, oh, now he's like, okay, I'm done. I know you're just trying to use me for show. But he is a very beautiful tarantula. These tarantulas come from Africa. And that's where most of the, so Africa and Asia are where most of the old world tarantulas are found. Again, those old world tarantulas do not have the urticating hairs like the uh, bird eating tarantulas we looked at and the Brazilian tarantula we just looked at. They have the urticating hairs, so they are called new world tarantulas. Okay, I'm going to put Oscar away and let him go back to being a grumpy guy, which is, of course, why his name is Oscar. This is one of my favorite tarantulas in here. Let me just set that up there so I can get this open. Here, my friend. Okay, so this tarantula just about two weeks ago got a brand new enclosure and already has webbed up a whole bunch. This is called a green bottle blue tarantula. And the green bottle blue tarantulas, sorry, just gotta grab my forceps again. I don't know if you've noticed, but I leave my forceps all the time. The green bottle blue tarantula is found in South America. And they're very awesomely colored. Look at these blue, bright blue legs. And this here, which is like a carapace, it's the cephalothorax. That's where the legs attach. It's also where the head is. Um, that is kind of a greenish blue color. And then look at the bright orange abdomen on this tarantula. Very awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now guess what? I'm going to show you another tarantula. Are you ready for this one? Let's come over here. Ooh, let's talk about this one. This is a Mexican red knee tarantula. His name is Fred. Fred is a male. And we have a female that hopefully will be ready um, to mate before Fred dies. So males don't live nearly as long as females. Usually the male tarantulas only live five to seven years. Do you remember how old Royal is, our 
our Chilean rose hair. She is about 27 years old. So the females live much, much longer. So this tarantula, the Mexican red knee tarantula, can you guess where it comes from? It comes from Mexico. So these tarantulas right here um, were very, very, very popular in the pet trade. So there's not a lot of them left um, in the wild. So you can no longer take these tarantulas out of the wild, which is good for them. Let's see if I can get Fred's face on here. Oh, look at that tarantula. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. He's got those awesome colors. And he is... He is not mature yet, so he still has to... Um, he is still going to molt again. So molting is the shedding of the exoskeleton so that the animal can grow. Let's get him in here. Although he did just molt, because guess what? This is his molt. You want to talk about that? Let's do that. So I have a whole bunch. Are there any tarantulas that have lethal venom? Rachel, that's a great question, and the answer is no. Tarantulas cannot kill humans, um, so no. Good question. And do the goliath bird-eating tarantulas live as long as the other one? No, the uh, goliath bird-eating tarantulas maybe live up to 15 years, but definitely not the 30 to 35 years that the Chilean rose hairs live. Okay, so these are all exoskeletons of tarantulas. There might be some scorpions in there too, but these are mostly exoskeletons of tarantulas. Can you guess how many are in there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There are so many in there. We could not even count them. So let me pull out this one right here. So this is from our Goliath bird eating tarantula. And you can see here, there's nothing inside. It's just a skeleton. But these animals, their skeletons are on the outside of the body. So everything in here is hollow. So we can see the fangs. I have to be very careful because it'll break. These, um, these right here, this is the opening to the fangs. So those are hollow right now. And each one of these holes is where the legs are, or these ones up here are where the pedipalps are. And if I flip it over, you can see the fangs here. So they molt their fangs. So molting is taking off the exoskeleton so the animal can grow. So right now, all of these tarantulas are growing inside of their exoskeleton. And when they get so big inside of their exoskeleton that they can't grow anymore, they take off their skeleton and then they grow a new skeleton. So here is, this is from our green bottle blue. Same thing, except this one still has the abdomen attached to it. And I was hoping to be able to, oh, here's a good one. Okay, so this is the underside of a tarantula's abdomen. This is the exoskeleton. So you see these white, looks like white little pieces of paper. Those are called book lungs. Well, that's where the book lungs were. And book lungs are how tarantulas breathe. Their lungs, the, the openings to their lungs are on the underside of the body. So if I flip this over, you can kind of see there's a black line right there. That's a slit. And so those open up to the book lungs where they breathe from. And to tell if it's a male or a female, you wait until they molt. And then you look at for this right here. You see how my forceps will go under this little flap? The females have that little flap. The males do not. 
So that's because that's where the ovaries, where they make the eggs, where those, uh, where the ovaries sit. So it makes that flap inside of their body. So let me just put this back and I'll show you again. Oh, look, here's a exos part of an exoskeleton from a scorpion. Look at all those. See, here's the top. So this would be the carapace. And look at those eyes. So there's nothing in those eyes right now. So they look crystal clear. Isn't that awesome? That is so cool. And you can see back here, these are the spinnerets. Again, those are hollow. So these are just the bones of a squir or a tarantula. Whoops, I dropped that. Let me get these back in here. And if you ever come to an insect zoo display, we put these out in a bowl that you can actually touch. So if you're afraid to touch a real tarantula, um, which you shouldn't be because our tarantulas that we let you touch um, will not hurt you, um, you can still um, feel what it feels like on an exoskeleton. So now I want to show you this guy right here. Well, actually, it's a girl. So these are striped knee tarantulas. And she's like, oh, I'm a little camera shy. Let me just pick her up here. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, look how pretty she is. And look, she's got like orange spinnerets. So these striped knees are found in Costa Rica. And we have a bunch of them. Do you know why? Because mm, they sell them in pet stores. And I'm a sucker for buying the tarantulas from pet stores. So I, just like the pink toe tarantulas that I buy up at the pet stores, I'm also buying these. You know what I just noticed? So I don't know if you can see these guys. You see these? Those are baby crickets that just hatched. So we must have had a female get fed to this tarantula and then she laid eggs into the substrate or the soil down here, and then they are hatching into babies. But don't worry, we will take them out of there because this tarantula will not eat those little babies. They are too small. And guess what? This tarantula's name is Goldilocks, and she just recently molted. There is her molt. So the students always leave the molts on top so that then I can confirm their sex. So we, that tarantula right there is from Costa Rica. Let's look at a tarantula that is found in the United States. This tarantula's name is Sharby, and I did name this tarantula after one of the people who used to work here at Iowa State who I respected very much, and he took a job somewhere else, and I miss him very much. So Sharby, if you are watching this, Shout out to you, and this is your tarantula. This tarantula is a Texas brown, and you can find these here in the United States. Very nice sized tarantula. Now, this Sharby is a female, but the Sharby that she is named after is a male. These tarantulas are very docile, and they, are not aggressive at all. They don't want to bite you. They want to run away and hide. And this tarantula we actually hold. So, but look how fuzzy his or her legs are. They're a very good sized tarantula for the United States. Very cool. Let's check out Sharby's face there. What an awesome face. What do they eat? So we feed um, our tarantulas, crickets, mealworms, and cockroaches. And in the wild, they feed on insects or small lizards, um, anything that they can capture that uh, is on the ground or accessible to them. Oh, let's do another tarantula from the United States. How about that? So this tarantula's name is Tara, and this is an Arizona blonde. So I actually collected this tarantula from Arizona and brought her back. 
and we had been waiting for her to molt. We had a male who was mature and ready to mate that I collected this last summer. And I brought him back so that um, Tara could have a boyfriend, but she decided not to molt before he died. So you see here where there's that black line right there. You see how it's darker right there and it's really light around it. So that tells us that Tara is about to molt. So what's happening to make that look like that is the new exoskeleton underneath is um, starting to form and the outer exoskeleton is pulling away from her body. So that's why it makes that those different colors there. But Tara is not molting. So um, we've tried giving her a lot of water, uh, but she's been here for about four years. So she's, see, she's a nice tarantula. So um, you know, she's molted uh, two times, I think, um, in, our, in our insect zoo. So we just don't know why she doesn't want to molt. All right. So now I'm ready to hold a tarantula. How about you? Touching all, looking at all these makes me just want to get out. Rosie. So Rosie is our Chilean rose hair. That is our program tarantula. That means that we um, take her out to programs and we actually let kids touch Rosie. So if you have ever seen the insect zoo before in person and you touched a tarantula, this is the tarantula that you would have touched. So there's Rosie and I'm going to prop my camera up here. I have a question. What are you going to do next? I think I'm gonna do beetles. Next, that'll be on Friday. Come here, Rosie. All right, so here's Rosie. That's not high enough. Let's do it here. Here, how about that? Okay, here's Rosie. She's our Chilean rose hair tarantula. She is a program animal. And you can also see here on Rosie that darker line but it's not as light around it. So she's gonna molt sometime, maybe about a year from now she will molt. Rosie is a very good tarantula. Now, okay, tarantulas are super awesome for many, many reasons. But one of my most favorite things about them is their little claws on their feet. So they have two little tarsal claws right on the, on the tips of their feet. And they can actually, you see those? Oh my gosh, did you see her cute little toes? They're not actually toes. Come here, Rosie. She's like, but I just want to cuddle. See if I can get her to bring them out again. Look at those little toes. She's got two little tarsal claws. And just like a cat can bring their claws in and out, tarantulas can do the same. Now, when we talked about the arboreal tarantulas, we talked about how they have little hairs on the bottom of their feet that are super, super short that help them be able to stick to glass and climb up smooth surfaces. So let me just get Rosie here because she is such a good tarantula that she is, if I hold her just like this, she will let me flip her over and you can see the underside. Now you can see her fuzzy little feet See those fuzzy little feet? Oh, there you can see her little claws. It's like she's wearing fuzzy slippers. And here are Rosie's fangs right here. And under those fangs is her mouth. And right here, there you see that line, that little slit. That is where the opening to her ovaries are, where she makes her eggs. And then there's a slit there and one over there. And those are her openings to her book lungs. Now you can see Rosie's eyes. Do you see her eyes? Now all tarantulas, well not all, most tarantulas have this little dent right here. And we don't really know what that's for, um, but it does look pretty cool and it's something to research, which we always need new things to research, right? 
There is a horned baboon tarantula that actually has like a horn growing out of that area. So there's Rosie and you can see her spinnerets back here. So that's how she makes her web. Ooh, I have a tarantula that will let me pull their web out of their spinnerets. Let me grab that tarantula real quick. Let's see. Peggy. So uh, some of our tarantulas are getting upgraded to new enclosures. And if you're wondering where I get these enclosures from, these ones right here come from the container store. And so do these ones here. We've had these ones for a while, but they already have holes drilled in them. So they are shoe boxes. These are shoe boxes. These are men's shoe boxes. And then they also have boot boxes and they have kid shoe boxes. So um, that's where I get them from. And they're very nice, although they do scratch up very easily. So I suggest getting the um, they have at the container store, there is this, th this three-step system to cleaning the plastic. And so I do suggest getting that. Oh, the event said 11. What? That's weird. I'm sorry. The video will be up on the Facebook page whenever we're done. So if you missed it, I'm super sorry I put the wrong time. Okay, so this is Peggy. And Peggy will let me actually pull out her web from her spinnerette. So I'm going to pick her up here. And I'm going to set this up like this. And okay, so here you see there's her spinnerettes right here. And if I just pinch here gently... Oh, Peggy. Oh, Peggy says, not today. <laughs> She's like, nope, not today. So let me find, Laverne might do it. We have a lot of Chilean rose hair tarantulas because they are awesome. Laverne, are you gonna let me do it? No. Maybe they're camera shy. They just like being out and about in person. How about Pinky? Now Pinky is actually a red form Chilean rose hair. So there's two different species that are referred to as Chilean rose hairs. There she goes. Okay, let's see if she lets me or if you can see it. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Come here, Peggy. I don't want you too close to Pinky here. Okay, I'm gonna see if we can do this, if this will show up on the... Nope, maybe I need something black behind there. I do have something black, which is one of my favorite books that I wanted to show you, but right now we're going to... Let's try to set this up in here like this. And put this camera over here. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Come here, Pinky. So, let's see. Oh, do you see that? Tell me you can see that. I'm not sure if you can back up to the beginning on a live there, Suzanne. Did you see that web, my friends? Is that it? That's it. Tell me you saw that. Oh, right, you saw it. That is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put Pinky back. You are such a good girl. Thank you, Pinky. See, she wasn't camera shy. She was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna show off my skills. <laughs> All right, so since I got this book out, um, if you're interested in learning more about arachnids, 
This is one of my favorite books. Look how worn it is. I have read this book. I reference this book a lot. Um, it's just called Arachnids. And um, Jan Beccaloni, Beccaloni, I'm not sure. She's um, from England, I believe, is where she's at. And it talks about all different species of arachnids. And does anybody know what this is on the front cover? That is, that is a, uh, I think it's a Brazilian wandering spider is what I think it is. Okay, also another good book, if you are in North America, is this Common Spiders of North America. It is fantastic. It is so awesome for um, identifying uh, spiders. It's got great pictures in it. So if you're interested in learning more about arachnids, definitely get this book. It's not for kids, but um, it is great for adults. And if you're older kids, so if you're like middle school, this would be good. And then as an ID book, this Common Spiders in North America is great. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple other tarantulas that I brought in from our other room because they need a higher humidity. And some of these are so amazing. Like this one right here. Come on, come up. The lid is stuck on it. Okay, so this is a Chaco Golden Knee. Look at the gold on that. Isn't he pretty? His name is Monty and he is a male. Very pretty tarantula. Let me see here. Sorry, we need to move a couple more things around. Okay, so the Chaco Golden Knee, this one right here, is found in places like Argentina and Uruguay. I love this tarantula. This tarantula's name is Marty, um, but it is a female. It is a pink zebra beauty, and she might be a little difficult to get out. So guess what? I lost my uh, forceps. So pink zebra beauty, also found in South America. Let's see if I can get her to come out. Come out, my friend. She's unfazed by the movement of my forceps over there. She's just like, eh, whatever. Come here. Can you come out? Wanna come out and play? She's like, no, I don't play with humans. Come here. <laughs> She's like, nope, I'm not coming out today. <laughs> So the pink zebra beauty is a very beautiful tarantula and it gets its name because it does have pink markings on it. I'm going to try not to disturb her little enclosure too much, but I want to see if I can just get her to come up a little bit. There, that's not too disturbing, is it? So there she is right there. Look how big she is. Isn't she pretty? Now you might be asking, but their enclosures are so tiny. Well, tarantulas, these tarantulas all live in little burrows or holes in the ground. And they don't move around much. And they don't go anywhere. The females very rarely leave their burrow. And when they do, they're hunting for food. So they don't need a lot of space. So we don't, and if you give them too much space, if they climb up, then they could fall and hurt themselves on something. You also might be asking what this is. Well, this is pebbles with water. So this is their water dish and every tarantula has a water dish, but we put the pebbles in there so that things like their food will not drown. So the crickets, if they jump in there, they are not going to drown. So we looked at a white knee tarantula earlier that was a female. 
This one is Marty. He is a male. Let me get it open here. So Marty is a male. And you see he's much smaller than our female. And he is mature. And so this is the one that I thought maybe would let me show you his... Um, the hooks on his pedipalp. So I'm very gently going to get him to kind of lift those up. Come here, Marty. Good job. Good job, Marty. And his hooks are right here. Are you going to let me? Nope. He's like, no, sorry. So sometimes he's very chill, um, but he is waiting and waiting and waiting for a female to mate with. And he might actually right now try to climb out because um, he knows that he needs to go walk around to find a female. So I talked about how the females do not leave their burrows very often, but the males leave when they are always wandering around, especially when they become mature and are ready to mate. They're gonna go wander around and try to find a female to mate with. Okay, we're gonna put Marty's enclosure back on. Now this one is a Brazilian red and white. So this is the species that always, these two, the, the Brazilian white knee and the Brazilian red and white, these guys are hard to tell apart. So this is Gertrude and look how fuzzy she is. Isn't she beautiful? Since she's called a Brazilian red and white, where do you think she's found? In Brazil, that's right. So she does like to flick her hairs. So you can see a little bald spot right here. So she does flick her hairs. Let me see if she wants to just come out. So again, I'm gonna very gently just say, hello, Gertrude. Hello. Come on. Nope. Oh, see, she flicked her hairs. Did you see that? And you may have saw it looked like dust uh, was coming up. So that means she's like, hey, don't bother me. So I'm not going to try to get her out anymore. We'll get closer there. Focus. Isn't she beautiful? All right, we'll put your little leaf back down here, Gertrude. All right, this next tarantula is super awesome. This is a very popular tarantula right now um, in the pet trade. Um, and so it makes them more difficult to find, but I was able to get this one before they became super popular as a little baby. And it's still a baby. I'm just gonna put that up there like that. So this is called a Brazilian black and it's the same genus as the rose hairs so the rose hairs are a big group of tarantulas that have lots of different species in it now he's still just a baby isn't he so cute and we don't know if he's a male or a female yet um for sure I think it's a female based on the last molt um but the next molt will for sure know Look at him. Isn't he beautiful? These are very docile or calm tarantulas. They're not aggressive. Now, before you ever handle a tarantula, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing. So I, again, I am a professional, so I know what I'm doing. And I know which tarantulas you could handle and which tarantulas you should never handle. Look at that cute little face. You see his eyes or her eyes? Very cute little tarantula. Right. Want to go back? Here you go, buddy. Put your house down. Can you put your house down? You gotta scoot over. There you go. Okay, let's check out this one. This next one is called a 
uh, Brazilian pink bloom. Now you may notice that we're using the word Brazilian a lot. That's because there are a lot of tarantulas in that area. And so some, most of the time, uh, well, not most of the time, a lot of the time, a tarantula is just named after the area that it's from. And this is a Brazilian pink bloom. Let's see if I can get her to just come out a little bit. Do you want to? Just a little bit? A little bit more. There you go. Check out those purple markings on her legs. Aren't those beautiful? Yes, and then she's got the pink, like, star mark here. They just have some beautiful colorations, don't they? They are absolutely gorgeous. And again, this is a New World Tarantula, so she does have those urticating hairs, or the hairs that she can brush off. Good girl, Evie. Her name is Evie. I know, I talk to my tarantulas, but uh, they don't know what I'm saying, but I, it, they hear by vibrations. So if they're hearing my voice, then when I do say something, they're not gonna scare, oh, they're not gonna be scared along. How long after they mate do the eggs hatch? Also, how many babies can they have? Those are great questions. So it depends. <clears throat> okay, this might be a little bit complicated answer. So while I'm answering this, I'm going to show you Evie again because she is beautiful, right? Okay, so there's Evie again. So a tarantula, when it mates, um, it can actually hold the sperm inside of its body until it's ready to fertilize the eggs. So that doesn't have to be right away. It could be a year. It could be a year and a half. As long as they release those eggs before they molt or shed their exoskeleton again, then they can fertilize their eggs whenever they want to. Okay, so now let's say she's ready. She has fertilized her eggs. And, oh, wait, but why would the tarantula hold the sperm and not want to fertilize their eggs? Well, maybe conditions are not right. Maybe she needs to wait for it to rain a lot. They need more moisture, or maybe they need to wait for a dry season, or maybe there's not enough food around. So being able to hold on to that sperm and decide when you fertilize your eggs is very important. And one reason why these, why these animals have been around for so long, like, since before the dinosaurs. That's a really long time. So ha having that ability um, makes you uh, more able to produce your offspring. Okay, so now let's say that Evie's like, okay, I am ready to have some babies. So she is going to, when she's ready, after she's fertilized those eggs, she's going to lay down some web on the ground. And then on that web that she's laid down on the ground, she's going to start laying eggs. But at first, those eggs look just kind of like tapioca pudding. And if you don't know what tapioca pudding is, imagine pudding with little balls in it. That's what it looks like. But then they start to harden and they turn into little eggs. And then she's going to build a web sack around those eggs. Now, how long it takes to develop as an egg uh, before they start to hatch, it depends on the species, but it's about six months, three to six months. Three to six months, those eggs will start to have legs. Eggs with legs, seriously. The egg turns into the body of the tarantula. There are, there's lots of nutrition inside of that egg. So the legs just start to form on the outside of the egg. And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually the mother tarantula will tear open the egg sac and the babies will still hang out in there a little bit. And then they'll start to venture out of the nest and as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they will leave farther and go farther and farther away from their mother. 
So I hope that answers your question and maybe wasn't too much detail. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm explaining things too much. But now I wanna show you a baby. Um, it is very webbed up in here. So this is a spiderling. And this is a, uh, a Venezuelan sun tiger. Let me see if I can convince it to come out. So I'm just gonna poke a tiny hole up here at the top and go in and say, peekaboo, can you come out please? There it is. You see him coming out? Look at that. Now this guy has grown a lot since the last time I saw him out of his burrow. So I thought it was smaller than it was. But this is a, a Venezuelan sun tiger tarantula. And it's got orange on its legs and on its abdomen. It is very pretty tarantula. Whoop! And they are climbers. <laughs> so we will actually, this will be put, oh, he's hiding. We will put this in a taller enclosure. I'm gonna put a note on this and um, that will give the students something to do. We will put it in a new enclosure. So this one I know is a baby. Here, I'm gonna give you a shot of Evie again while I open this enclosure up. These critter keepers that I am, that this tarantula is in are very difficult to open for humans and for the tarantulas. Now this is a spiderling. And now when this spiderling uh, left its nest, it was about this big. Do you see how far apart my forceps are there? That's how big it was. This is a pumpkin patch. Um, they come from Colombia. And if you notice, it's got some bare area on its abdomen. That's because they flick but if all of those hairs were there, there would be more orange. There would be orange stripes right down there. So this is a little baby tarantula. These are going to get much bigger, probably about, you see where, how far apart my forceps are? About that big is how big they will get. Okay, so those are all the tarantulas that I have to share. But I do have kind of an oddball animal. That doesn't really fit in with anything else except the tarantulas because it is an arachnid. So this right here is called a, well, there's a couple names for it, a tailless whip spider, or we call it just a whip spider. So these are found all over the world. They are not actually a spider, but they are an arachnid. They are an amblypigid. Here, here's Evie again <laughs> while I open up this enclosure. They're an amblypigid, so they are an arachnid. Oh, cool! Guess what just happened? So we can't touch this because it just molted. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. So it looks like there's two... But that is its exoskeleton. You remember what the exoskeleton is? That's the skeleton on the outside of the body. So let's see. Oh, and she's kind of stuck in there. Let's see if we can help her. So one of the many, many things that I do is help the, the animals when they have, um, have problems molting. So... Molting is a very difficult process. And in fact, the animals can die while they're molting. Whoop, so she just lost one of her whip legs, but that's okay. Come here, my baby. Come here, baby. There we go. Okay, so she is super fragile right now. Now, um, she's kind of like a blackish gray color. So that's because her exoskeleton is not hard yet. So I'm going to hurry and I'm going to get her back um, into her enclosure. I'm going to put her back on her stick here and very gently. I'm being very, very gentle with this animal because her skeleton is not hard yet. And we don't want to hurt her. 
Okay, very gently put her back in there. So there she is. She's back in there. Let's see if I can get the lid back on. Okay, so there's her exoskeleton. Right there, you can see the different parts of it. But don't worry, my friends, I do have another living one that we are going to look at. And it is in here. And this one is an adult. So the one I was just showing you is a baby. And animal pinches are found all over the world except Antarctica. So we even have these in the United States. Um, and they only get to be as about as big as this little baby that just molted. So let me just set this up here while I get this guy out. Come here, friend. There you go. Oop, there you go. Hello. Yep, there you are. All right. Check out this guy. So this is an amblypidget or a whip spider, and it looks pretty dangerous, doesn't it? Look, looks pretty mad, very dangerous. It is not dangerous. These do not have venom. They do not have a stinger. They just look scary because they don't want you to eat them. Now you may notice how flat its body is. These guys live in the crevices of rocks or under bark or even along uh, the forest floor in the leaf litter. And they have these really cool, I need to set this up here. They have these really cool legs right here. You see these legs? Those are not, they don't look like legs, do they? And they don't use them for walking. Look how long they are. See, that's why they're called a whip scorpion or whip spider. It's because these, we call them whip legs and they use them like antennae. So they use them to feel around. So while they're hiding, they kind of stick those out so that they can feel the vibrations of the animals that are coming along. And when it's something that is the right size that they can eat, then they will reach out really fast with these right here, which are actually it's pedipalps. They are part of its mouth. They will reach out and they will stab them with these long claws right here. And see, they can move them. They can open and close them, but they can't really pinch like a scorpion can pinch. Aren't those cool? So since the insect zoo, we are uh, kind of decommissioned right now and we don't have very many students working. Um, in fact, we went about two weeks with only one student taking care of all the animals um, and myself. But uh, our animals that, are, that we handle are handled every day by somebody. So some of these animals haven't been handled in a while because we don't have the students to do it. And this is one of them. So that's why he's kind of like, um, I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to show you his cool face. Check out that face. Now, where are his eyes? Can you see his eyes? So his eyes are right in the center there. Right there are his eyes. He's pretty sweet, isn't he? Can you see his mouth? Very cool. Now you may have no, or you may recognize this from Harry Potter. So there is one of these in Harry Potter, but the one in Harry Potter is much, much bigger than they actually get. And since these are in Harry Potter, all of our Amble Pigeons are named after Harry Potter characters, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna put him away. Go right up there, pal. There you go. All right. Let me just check and see if I have any more questions. Oh, yes, John, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to um, make it for 11. I'm so sorry. And the replay will be available as soon as I end this. Um, it usually takes about two or three minutes to upload it. Um, so I will make that available. And also, today I am going to put all of the videos that we've already done on YouTube. So if you know somebody who does not have Facebook that would like to watch these videos, um, I am going to upload all of these to the Insect Zoo's YouTube page, and then I will share those um, on our website and also um, on Facebook, okay? 
<laughs> so my friends, uh, that is everything that I have for you today. And I'm so sorry that the event time was wrong. All of our lives are going to be at 10, but the replays are always going to be available as soon as they get uploaded af right after the live. So however long it takes. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. On Friday, we are going to be live at 10 a.m. And we are going to do Beatles, which are going to be really awesome. I love the Beatles. Oh, not the band. If you're thinking we're doing the Beatles, the band, that's not what we're doing. We're doing the insects of the Beatles. So um, thank you for joining us. If you are interested in having the insects zoo visit you, uh, you can go to our website, zoo.ent.iastate.edu, and there you will find all of the information about our programming and our fees. And also you can find the link to our webcam that is on our Honey Pot Ants. It is there. It's live. It's up and running. Um, if you're interested in Insect Zoo t-shirt, you can send me a message. We have all different sizes, youth and adult. We have the scorpion, tarantula, jungle nymph, cockroaches. Um, and you can just send me a message or comment below or send me an email, zoo at iastate.edu. Uh, we're running a special for $10 and I'll split the shipping with you. So $2 for shipping. So $12 if you're getting one shirt with shipping. So thank you guys so much for joining us and go forth and love the bugs. <laughs>